Hello everybody. After explaining the concept of line balancing in a previous video, let us provide a solved example. This example is from the Operations Management book written by William Stevenson. Using the information contained in the table shown, do each of the following. 1. Draw a precedence diagram. 2. Assuming an 8-hour workday, compute the cycle time needed to obtain 400 units per day output. 3. Determine the minimum number of workstations required. 4. Assign tasks to workstations using this rule. Assign tasks according to the greatest number of following tasks. In case of a tie, use the tiebreaker of assigning the task with the longest processing time first. 5. Compute the resulting percent idle time and efficiency of the system. Let us start with the first question to draw the precedence diagram for this data. The first task in the list is task A without any immediate predecessor. The precedence diagram starts from the left, so at the far left draw a node with the letter A inside. The duration of this task is 0.2 minutes, so write 0.2 above the node. The second task is task B and its immediate predecessor is task A, or task B is following task A. So draw an arrow starting at A and pointing to the right. Then draw a node with the letter B inside and 0.2 above as the duration of task B is 0.2 minutes. The third task in the list is task C without any immediate predecessor. As usual, the precedence diagram starts from the left. So, at the far left below task A, draw a node with the letter C inside and 0.8 above as the duration of task C is 0.8 minutes. The fourth task is task D and its immediate predecessor is task C or task D is following task C. So, draw an arrow starting at C and pointing to the right. Then draw a node with the letter D inside and 0.6 above as the duration of task B is 0.6 minutes. The fifth task is task E and its immediate predecessor is task B. So, draw an arrow starting at B and pointing to the right. Then draw a node with the letter E inside and 0.3 above as the duration of task B is 0.3 minutes. The next task is task F with two immediate predecessors, task D and task E. Here we will draw two arrows from D and E. After that, draw a node with the letter F inside and its duration one minute above. The next task is task G with an immediate predecessor, task F. So, draw an arrow starting from F and pointing to the right, then draw a node with the letter G inside and its duration 0.4 above. The last task is task H with an immediate predecessor, task G. So, draw an arrow starting from G and pointing to the right, then draw a node with the letter H inside and its duration 0.3 above. Now we finished the precedence diagram, which visually represents the tasks to be completed in the production line and the sequential requirements, indicating the order in which the tasks must be performed. The second question is to find the cycle time required to produce 400 units daily in 8 hours. As we know the cycle time equals the operating time per day divided by the desired output rate. So, it equals 8 multiplied by 60. To convert hours to minutes, divided by 400 is equal to 480 divided by 400 is equal to 1.2 minutes. The third question is to find the required minimum number of workstations, which equals sigma t divided by the cycle time. It is given that sigma t equals 3.8, so n minimum equals 3.8 divided by 1.2, the calculated cycle time equals 3.17 station. Because 3.17 stations are not feasible, it is necessary to round up to 4 stations, because 3.17 is the minimum. After having the precedence diagram, the cycle time, and the minimum number of required workstations, we can now assign tasks to workstations. The rule is to start with a task having the greatest number of following tasks. To do this systematically, I will use this table. In the first column, the workstation numbers will be listed, in the second one the remaining time will be given, in the third column, the eligible tasks will be listed. In the fourth column, the tasks that will fit will be listed. The tasks that will fit means the eligible task with a duration less than the station's remaining time. The next column will contain one of the tasks that will fit to be assigned to the corresponding workstation with its duration written between brackets. The following column will comprise the revised remaining time, which is the difference between the current remaining workstation time and the assigned task duration. The last column will include the idle time, which means the time when the workstation is not used. This happens when no eligible task can fit in the workstation's remaining time. Let's go. Beginning with station 1, make assignments following this procedure. 
The time remaining is 1.2 as there are no tasks assigned to Station 1 yet. Determine from the precedence diagram which tasks are eligible for assignment. In the current case, they are tasks A and C because they do not have any predecessors. So, write A and C in the next cell. The time for these two tasks is less than the station's remaining time, so both of them will fit in Station 1. Task A has five following tasks, while Task C has only four followers. Applying this rule, assign tasks according to the greatest number of following tasks, we should assign Task A to the first station. The next cell in the table contains the revised time remaining, which equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned tasks time. This is equal to one minute. This stage has no idle time, so keep the last cell blank. The revised time remaining of the previous step is the time remaining of this step. Task A is already assigned to Station 1, so the next eligible tasks are Tasks B and C. The immediate predecessors of all the other tasks are not assigned to a station yet, so these tasks are not eligible. The time for both Tasks B and C is less than the station's remaining time, so both will fit in Station 1. To assign one of them to Station 1, we have to check the number of following tasks for each of them. Task B has four following tasks, the same as Task C. Here we have a tie, so we have to use the tiebreaker of assigning the task with the longest processing time first. Task B's time is 0.2 minute, while the time of Task C is 0.8 minute. Consequently, assign Task C to Station 1. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned tasks time. This is equal to 0.2 minute and means that we need to work more in Station 1. The revised time remaining of the previous step is the time remaining of this step. Tasks A and C are already assigned to Station 1, so the next eligible tasks are Tasks B and D. The immediate predecessors of all the other tasks are not assigned to a station yet, so these tasks are not eligible. The time for tasks B equals the time remaining while the time for task D is more. So, only task B will fit in station 1. As only one eligible task can fit in station 1, which is task B, consequently, assign task B to station 1. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned tasks time. This is equal to zero minute which means station 1 is completely full with no idle time. Let us start now with station 2. Because no tasks are assigned to the station yet, its time remaining is 1.2 minutes the same as the calculated cycle time. Tasks A, B, and C are already assigned to Station 1, so the next eligible tasks are Tasks D and E. The immediate predecessors of all the other tasks are not assigned to a station yet, so these tasks are not eligible. The time for both Tasks D and E is less than the second station's remaining time, so both will fit in Station 2. To assign one of them to Station 1, we have to check the number of following tasks for each of them. Task D has three following tasks, the same as Task E. Here we have a tie, so we have to use the tiebreaker of assigning the task with the longest processing time first. Task D's time is 0.6 minute, while the time of Task E is 0.2 minute. Consequently, assign Task D to Station 2 because it is the task with longer processing time. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned tasks time. This is equal to 0.6 minute and means that we need to work more in Station 2. The revised time remaining of the previous step is the time remaining of this step. Tasks A, B, C, and D are already assigned to stations. The remaining tasks must be performed sequentially from left to right. So, the only eligible task is Task E. The time for tasks E is less than the time remaining, so it will fit in Station 2. As only one task is eligible and can fit in Station 2, which is Task E, consequently, assign Task E to Station 2. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned tasks time. This is equal to 0.3 minutes and means that we need to work more in Station 2. The revised time remaining of the previous step is the time remaining of this step. Three tasks are left. The first one from the left is task F. So, it is the only eligible task. However, the time required to process task F is longer than station 2's remaining time. So, no task will fit into the remaining time of station 2. Consequently, 
no more tasks will be assigned to this station. Moreover, the 0.3 minutes remaining time of this station will be left as idle time. After finishing Station 2, let us start with Station 3. Because no tasks are assigned to the station yet, its time remaining is 1.2 minutes the same as the calculated cycle time. Three tasks are left. The first one from the left is Task F. So, it is the only eligible task. Moreover, its required time is shorter than the station's time remaining, so it will fit in Station 3. Consequently, assign Task F to Station 3. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned task's time. This equals 0.2 minutes and means that we need to work more in Station 3. The revised time remaining of the previous step is the time remaining of this step. Two tasks are left. The first one from the left is task G. So, it is the only eligible task. However, its time is longer than the station time remaining. So, neither task G nor any other task will fit in station 3. Consequently, no more tasks will be assigned to station 3. Moreover, the 0.2 minutes remaining time of this station will be left as idle time. For the last station, station 4, its time remaining is 1.2 minutes. The same as the calculated cycle time because no tasks are assigned yet. Two tasks are left. The first one from the left is task G. So, it is the only eligible task. The processing time of G is shorter than the time remaining in station 4, so it will fit in this station. Consequently, assign task G to station 4. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned task's time. This is equal to 0.8 minutes and means that we need to work more in Station 4. The revised time remaining of the previous step is the time remaining of this step. Only task H is left. So, it is the only eligible task. Its time is shorter than the time remaining of Station 4, so, it fit in Station 4. Since it is the last task and it can fit in this station, assign task H to Station 4. The revised time remaining equals the difference between the initial time remaining and the assigned task's time. This is equal to 0.5 minutes. Because there is no more task, this time remaining in Station 4 will be considered as idle time. The total idle time equals 0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.5 is equal to 1 minute. In conclusion, the given seven tasks were assigned to four stations with total idle time one minute. Where tasks A, B, and C are assigned to station 1, tasks D and E are assigned to station 2, task F is assigned to station 3, and tasks G and H are assigned to station 4. The last question is to compute the resulting percent idle time and efficiency of the system. We have a calculated total idle time of 1 minute and 4 workstations 1.2 minute each. So, the percent idle time equals 1 multiplied by 100 divided by between brackets 4 multiplied 1.2 equals 20.83%, while the efficiency equals 100% minus the percent idle time equals 100% minus 20.83% equals 79.17%. In this example, the precedence diagram was drawn, the cycle time and the minimum number of workstations were calculated, the given tasks were assigned to 4 workstation and finally, the percent idle time and the line efficiency were computed. More examples and problems will be explained in another videos. So, keep following us, stay tuned, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. Thanks for watching. Your feedback is appreciated so, please comment on this video. And, if you like it give a thumbs up and share it. See you again.